All right, Jack Delmay is here. Okay. We're gonna so why don't we bring Jack in? Make some room for the CEO of Hitachi Data Systems. I'm gonna bring him in. Jack, yeah, welcome over. to theCUBE. Thanks, dude. Good to see you. Great to, to have you on. You. How are you doing? Great, great. Great, uh, key, great keynote. Yeah, right into the microphone, Jack. Okay, yeah. great. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, absolutely. Great, great. So, uh, great keynote. Loved great your keynote. We had a bunch of people watching live. We took your live feed oh, into our community. Great. We've had, what do we have, 3,000 people so far today We're watching our, about 3, our live feed? people yeah. good, in and out. Um, great job. I mean, you know, we were commentating earlier, kind of doing the color to your keynote. So we kind of had you, oh, you did. in good. picture doing a little color. I like President o, you know, Barack Obama. How do you feel? You know? How'd you feel up there? <laughs> you know, I, I love it, right? Because it's something that we've been talking about for probably eight years is this whole building blocks, you know, moving toward the information, toward the, um, you know, toward the content cloud. And, you know, the terminology's changed over time, but the strategy has it. And so it's, it's pretty exciting for everybody in Hitachi. I was really, really impressed with your vision. I mean, no one's talking about this content cloud. You guys are talking a big game in openness and delivering on that. And you know, we were just at Oracle Open World, which, you know, some were calling closed world. Yeah. You know, Oracle is, you know, kind of got that, you know, application proprietary. You guys are unleashing the applications from this data layer. And that's impressive. You talked about um, data for mobility, mobile data, unstructured data. You really talked about the future, and I was really impressed, and do we want to you know, dig, dig into that deeper? Um, first of all, congratulations for going on Facebook, and I think it's over 500 million users oh, now. Oh, 500, wow, so it since, grew. It since grew you, since last week. <laughs> since you joined. Yeah. We, so, we tried to friend you, Jack, but you're yeah. going to have to friend us. No, yeah. no, okay, <laughs> got it, great, thanks. Yeah. Facebook is what we, you know, we, we talk a lot about that, but yeah. seriously, you guys have, are not really known for being that forward thinking in the general marketplace. You guys are known for being reliable, being high performance and scale. And so, you know, talk about this transformation. Uh, we had your VP of the platforms on, and he talked about software. Talk about what's changed with Hitachi now over the past few years and, 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 the, and what that means to the marketplace. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to. You know, um, part of it is this culture. You know, and Ishigaki-san stood up there and he talked about the excitement of the culture. You know, the synergy of getting so many great minds together, right? And really pushing beyond, hey, today is a great announcement, but it's not just a storage announcement, right? And so it's kind of this, um, what is the step? What is the step toward? And it was this ability that says, you know what? You've heard the customers talk about the mobility of data. And it's, um, it's one of those things that, um, if I can move the data around and I can create flexibility for the environment, the infrastructure environment, and I can create independence for the applications so that I don't bring the applications down, and I start to discover more about the content itself, all of a sudden the doors open up and all of a sudden this content cloud, this platform becomes very real. And it's this ability to discover data independently of the application. And so one of these things is, is that when you realize that this building blocks and where they go to and what it will do for us as a business, as well as what it will do for our customers, it's really exciting. Yeah, you've really built a great team around here, Jack. I mean, I know a number of your, your colleagues. You guys were, used to be startup guys, right? Yeah, the, we did. The old storage we did. networks right. day. So we had you, a lot of guys. you're used to really going fast and, 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 and innovation. How have you been able to bring that to, to HDS? Yeah, I, I love the question because it's more of the cultural aspect. You know, it's the excitement and it's the synergy of alignment. And so part of what we've done here is we have a lot of Hitachi colleagues that are across the pond, basically. We've brought a lot of the synergies of development and design and vision to HDS. And we've really linked the two companies together very tightly. And so now when you can passionately display this vision around not only storage and infrastructure, what we've done and what you heard about all today, but where it can go and how we can grow the company, you know, into the markets around content, around search, around discovery. This really gets everybody in Hitachi excited about mm. the potential growth of Hitachi, the company, and where it can grow with us. Can you, can you talk a little bit about your business? I mean, we know Hitachi, everybody knows them as this, this $100 billion company and, and, and you run a you know key component of that yeah. it's, and, and, and how's business? It's been great. Um, you know, over the last several years, uh, we were quoted in the uh, Wall Street Journal here, we've had very good growth over the last eight years. Um, even last year when the economies were down, I just wanted to kind of make a mention that business was good because we're saving our customers money. This is real. This is where you can install in virtualization, you can move data around while keeping your, um, your applications up. 
You can do it while you can move the data around to be um, optimizing your infrastructure. I think customers have really seen the ROI that they get from this, um, this virtualization, this technology. And I also think that from a customer's perspective, they want to know where we're going. What's the vision? Where's the future for Hitachi? And so when we link it all together and we move into the content and information, they really want to partner up with us. They want to be a part of that journey. Yeah, John, I that's think, a unique I think, I, think, I think your vision is right on the money, and we agree with it 100% at siliconangle.com. And, and it's, it's that kind of the Pollyanna, Facebook, hey, the, the new world's changing those new forces you mentioned. But you know, Facebook goes down, You one of your colleagues mentioned, hey, they go down couple times this last week, no one really cares. Their photos, they didn't see their photos for a few hours. Yeah. You can't do that. So talk about what's different. Talking about the future is one thing, the vision, but you run businesses that can't go down. And so you got scale, you got future requirements, those forces, yep. and you got cost pressures. That, how does that all line up? I mean, because they don't really seem to be compatible. I mean, reduced cost you know, is not usually innovative. So how do you guys look at that? It seems that you have some good meat in the bone there. Yeah, it is. And you know what? I think we still have customers out there or potential customers who don't really believe this. And so we tried to bring in customers today that are running their transaction processing on virtualized environments. This is like BBT stands up there and says, hey, we're running 95% of our transactional systems in a virtualized environment. 95%. The only 5% that are not virtualized in BBT is their data warehousing. This is virtualized across to EMC, IBM, Hitachi. And that is transaction processing out at the ATM level in your banking transactions. And this whole notion that virtualized environments cannot run transactions, they cannot run in high performance, high stressed areas, uh, this is incredible stuff. And there's customer after customer. You know we're in just about every <laughs> single high uh, profile bank in the world. And they are running their top transactional processing in a virtualized environment with the flexibility to move data f among different tiers without ever bringing the applications down. They have said um, vehemently that we cannot come down. We have to have 100% uptime, either scheduled or unscheduled. And like one of the banks from India says, we've been up 10 years and are still moving data around in a much more efficient way around the optimization of the yeah. infrastructure. And storage and is changing, Dave. I mean, you know, we, we've been talking about, we've been covering cloud computing, and, and, and when we started covering cloud computing, we were looking at the marketplace, we instantly vectored into storage because everyone we talked to, it wasn't about servers, it was about storage. This is a year ago, you know, and all of a sudden like, well, why is storage? coming back, isn't storage old? So Dave and I <laughs> coined the term storage is sexy. So we've asked every CEO that we've interviewed, Joe Tucci, um, Tom Georgians, is storage sexy or hot from your perspective? What, how would you answer that question? Well, you know, it is. Um, I don't know <laughs> if it's sexy, but um, you know, it is that. definitely getting a lot of atten attention. You know, I <clears throat> Excuse me, I just have it. Um, out in the market, you know, you, you look at the acquisitions of like 3PAR and so mm. forth, and these storage acquisitions, I think it's raising the attention of a lot of people. We think it's sexy, and it has a great future because you can expand it to so, so many different places. People trust their data with us. It's not like compute. This is their data. This is like their lifeblood. This is their fiduciary responsibility, is to make sure that this data is never lost. You will get called in front of the um, FDIC and the SEC if this data somehow disappears. So this is beyond just being down or um, something. This is about protecting that data for its life and yeah. whatever vertical. So you talk a little bit about that industry consolidation. And by the way, I think Dave Scott definitely thinks, John, that storage is sexy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 right. so, um, we'll have a highlight there shortly. We've seen a lot of consolidation, obviously. You saw last year data domain, and, yeah. and mm -hmm. you've seen things like Natiza and Greenplum get taken out, and, and most recently, 3PAR. What, do you, what does that mean for Hitachi? You know, it's really a great question, because you know, way, even way back when, when you saw the um, acquisition of Documentum, you know, in FileNet. I think a lot of people in the industry thought these were great um, applications that dragged storage. I don't think the um, consolidation of those were around actually consolidating the storage to data, to a content to information strategy. So what we've seen here is really not the uh, synergistic approach to vision. We've seen a cobbling of things together because maybe they don't have the R&D presence, mm -hmm. maybe they don't have the continuity. Y you know, the three par. You know, HP's a great partner, um, but I also think they recognize the power of owning the IP. And maybe they let the uh, EVA and the IP around that go down. That's why I applaud what we've been able to do with Hitachi. 
we've been able to have consistent R&D marching toward a synergistic vision of storage, data, content information. Okay, so, so fundamentally, uh, aggressive acquisitions are, are, are not a fundamental part of the strategy, is that correct? We acquire certain parts of the IP when we need it. Yeah. You know, what we've tried to do, Dave, is have a horizontal strategy where we embrace partners. So let's, for example. Open. Open, very open. But we're here as we try and transition these markets. You're in a major um, time frame where markets are transitioning. Who will own the content services? You know, we're offloading a lot of those content services from the application. But I'll guarantee you that we will make those content applications much better by being able to search across islands of data. Making it manageable. Absolutely. Yeah. So they're going to always handle the workflow. They're going to handle the ingestion, the taxonomies of uh, content. We're going to make the heavy lifting of index search, of discovery, of repurposing billions, if not trillions of objects, much better for them. Yeah, much so our whole strategy is to make each other a win-win much different of owning than, it. Much different than what we hear from, for instance, John, we were at Oracle Open World last week. Cool. Clearly, they're on an acquisition binge. You see EMC, you know, doing a lot of acquisitions. Well, they got to buy. They got to. They got to buy their innovation because yeah. they, they got caught flat-footed. People who get caught flat-footed tend to, to buy, and that's ge the general consensus. And um, HP, we know, has you know cut R and D substantially. That's been reported, you know, you know, in the trade press, let's, Wall Street. Let's Journal. talk about the future. I mean, you mentioned in your keynote, you know, why virtualized storage, you know, data-centric message, uh, you know, optimizing infrastructure. But you mentioned discovery, and you don't hear a lot of storage execs talking about discovery. And the things that we've been tracking in our research and on the, on our publishing is the the mobile market. And what's coming out of that research is data, low latency data is a, the driver for innovation, meaning whether it's gestural data from the user, circulating that back into the application, not as a storage recover. So, yeah. so can you talk a little bit about what's happening with Hitachi relative to what I call that that little data, like the, the, it needs to be fast. Is it solid state? Is it going to be back end? Is it cloud data? Because the content market relies on instant feedback. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting because this is a big premise of where we think of data lifecycle management. We see data, and the, the great announcement that we had today, and people have asked me to connect this announcement today on those kind of small pieces of data. You know, how do you plan to access them, discover them, and do the life cycle management on them? When you, when you take, for example, our granularity at the page or object level now, I can take data that has not been accessed, okay? And I can say, if that data hasn't been accessed in 30 days, I'm going to move it down from, say, an SSD and I'm going to put it down to tier one. It is still accessible and discoverable by all the applications and consumers of that data. We've just optimized the infrastructure to meet the business demands. If it is accessed um, more frequently, we'll move it back up a tier. We'll move it into memory if we have to. The actual location of data, when you take the cloud concept, the actual physical location doesn't matter anymore. That's a scaling out message. Absolutely, because I virtualized data. Yeah, I didn't that's virtualize the key. storage, I virtualized data. And that's not new for you guys, virtualization. No, it's I mean, the it's same it's strategy <laughs> we've had forever. And now people are starting to resonate with it and say, oh, that is a data and content yeah, there's strategy. There's a business need out there, demand is there. Absolutely. And so when you talk about billions of objects and these little objects moving around inside the ecosystem, they're all still discoverable, searchable, and integratable. It's just that we were able to place them according to the infrastructure that was best used for the optimization of both the business requirements and the infrastructure requirements. You also taught something that was uh, you just mentioned briefly, but I thought it was worth teasing because we, we really picked up on this. You mentioned virtualization, not just server, but application and then consumer. Can you expand more on what you meant by that? Is it that the, the virtualization has to impact all three segments or that virtualization per se will sit on all three layers? Well, it, it's a great, um, great pickup. Because, you know, the application itself, we had to virtualize, okay? So the application had to become independent of its own data. That was key. So the ability for even our infrastructure customers right now to move data independent of the application was step one. That was to prove the infrastructure environment. But it was also the ability to now create integration capabilities across applications. The whole new generation of applications being created by this virtual environment of compute. These are small, very thin apps. How are they going to access data in the future? How will they be able to share data? They will have to do it in a kind of a cloud infrastructure, right? They cannot go in a siloed approach and try and access each other's it's data. too slow. 
it's too slow yeah. and the integration and capabilities of that are not yeah, going to yeah. be fulfilled so that's where this integration of the content virtualization is really going to fulfill the access of data from those applications you, you know another thing i picked up on in your keynote was this you know obviously the content cloud but the bringing together of the of the content with the mission critical type of, of platforms Absolutely. and and years ago um, some of your competitors emc in particular put forth this ilm vision yeah. it was a great vision the problem was it wasn't actionable yeah. and so I think you're making it actionable. I wonder if you could comment on that. I mean, people can, well, can buy stuff around it now. Yeah, it is, and that's what we're most proud of. You know, it's a programmatic, it's a pragmatic approach. And, and I'll say, this may be controversy, I, I think with the way we're recognized in the industry is they say we do. We and love if, controversy in the cube. Too. Yeah, I know. And <laughs> so the cube is part, part of it is, you know, we've, I wanted to sh explain the context of this vision today. They talk you up. What's that? They talk, you guys walk. That was it. They <laughs> say we do. You they know, is EMC. Yeah. Well, okay. you know, some of them. Yeah. yeah. But, but part of that information lifecycle management automation, we're getting to the point now where, you know, the lifecycle management not only of the data itself, but the physical assets. You know, physical assets are only going to last three to four years, right? Then what are you going to do once you fill up that internal tier of tier two data? What, what are you going to do with it if you did not perfect the mobility? the movement of data between tiers, because in one sense, I think a lot of our competitors say we have tiering in the box. And Hugh touched on this today. Tiering in the box, well eventually that's going to fill up one of those tiers, and that technology is no longer usable. You've got to move it to the next tier or to the next technology. Keep coming back to virtualization as the enabler. Virtualization. So, 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 the, so the conversation that I didn't hear was big data. You didn't, I don't think you used that word once, big data, but that's a big discussion in the industry right now. What do you do with the big data, the Yahoo's, the Facebook's? The, I mean, they're throwing up a ton of data. I mean, so big data being, you know, could be the Hadoop movement, for example, but companies have huge data. How, how do you talk about that big data framework relative to what you guys are uh, announcing today? You know, it's kind of funny because you say, how do we respond to big data? Usually a lot of people <laughs> categorize are. us as big data <laughs> yeah, okay. only, you know? Yeah, yeah. We are big data. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, it's assumptive, I guess. I, I'm, well, no, I'm glad that people are starting to consider us because the nice thing about VSP is it's very expandable. You can start very small. You can start with a shell of virtualization. Do you know that today some people use our virtualization just to move their own competitor storage? They'll put in a VSP or um, our own USP VM yeah. just as a virtualizer, just to be able to move and migrate data between EMC boxes because they can't do it. So this whole idea around big data like Yahoo, Yahoo's one of our biggest, fastest growing accounts right now. The idea of this content platform is very striking to them. The ability to actually index data, be able to search data across application. I think we're not emphasizing that enough that all of a sudden, remember how you access data today. You have to access it in the silo it was created in. That was the federated search concept, right? Now we break all that apart and you say, oh, now I have data stored and indexed across all these applications, independent of the media, and now information mining becomes available. So you can see it's, where the it changes the data comes. warehouse business. I mean, the business intelligence and the data warehouses are being disrupted big time by this new vision, and or uh, enhancing them. Okay, so it's what I'm hearing though, Jack, is so your play there is you don't have to own the database. You just want to be the best storage for that data warehouse. Well, and you're you're linking between intelligent storage and intelligent data. So right now, what it is is you could almost consider us the data warehouse for all objects. How's that? But you're never going to have that middle layer of the data um, data warehouse anymore. You're basically storing it inside the infrastructure. Every single object is going to be stored and it's going to be indexed. Not only the properties, but the actual content that sits in that object. Can you give some examples? I mean, this is a compelling vision. I think very relevant. I mean, uh, the cloud person, <laughs> the content cloud we love because we that's that's our business. Yep. Um, but like the applications, that, that's a big challenge. It's a growing area. So, so give us some use cases of, and proof points or some customer examples of yeah. where the, the applications are being freed up and innovative because of the Hitachi. Well, you know, we used to call it in the content world hierarchical data management. The key with a lot of applications, if they want to run very fast, is they've got to stay thin, right? That's where you got, you offloaded the major data repositories of a content system and you might have moved that data to a different tier. Okay, you still had access to it, but I couldn't run quite as fast. So we're seeing all kinds of content systems say, you know what, we're going to maintain the thinness or the fast performing data in this content system because Hitachi is going to life cycle my data automatically when that data is not accessed. Everybody talks about this market of life cycle management or data classification. We make it very simple. 
This is really simple. If it hasn't been accessed, and the policy is set at the application level, if it has not been accessed in, say, 30 days, yeah. we're yeah. going to move it down. Got it. Yeah. And it's still discoverable. I mean, that's the simplest classification you can get to. You never lose sight of any data. And so when you say backup or VTL or any of this stuff, our premise is, is that we are continuing to lifecycle manage data into the most efficient technologies, the most efficient storage there is, and yet still making it accessible. You never lose access to your data. Yeah, and with server virtualization and storage virtualization, it really changes the way you think about the way you move data around the network, the way you Absolutely. protect data. Yeah. It's a whole new... And you have to do it transparently transparently so that the applications do not know. Yeah, you made care. that point a lot in your yeah. keynote. Which yeah. was, which you mentioned umbrella virtualization in your keynote. Mm. Can you elaborate more on that? Is it more of a broader term or specifically is it the tiering? It's, I wish it was my term. It was my customer's terms. I was in North Carolina last week and they said the ability for Hitachi to come in and put an umbrella over all of the different vendors, the silos of vendor technologies was key to their efficiency the key to moving to this evergreen state, the key to doing life cycle management of assets. So a lot of people talk about virtualization, but it's within their own context. We talk about yeah, yeah. the umbrella That's concept. the openness, attach any, openness, anyone's storage. You absolutely, that. and pooling those assets, for whether it's EMC or IBM, pooling that storage and data into one large pool that we can manage. I have a different kind of question, This is, and this is more of a, maybe it's a philosophical, but maybe put your uh, you know, chats with your customer, you, know, you talk about customers all the time. Virtualization is changing the workforce. It used to be very disciplined. You have a lot of cross, you know, disciplinary issues going on. What impact to the IT organizations are you seeing relative to their core competency? I mean, the biggest complaint is, ah, virtualization is scary. Some people embrace it. It's intoxicating to a lot of tech guys. It's very, you know, efficient. Oh, new things can happen. How is it changing the workforce? The guys in, in the front lines doing IT? Yeah, it's a great question because one of our customers just um, talked about it. It used to be if you wanted to migrate data from say one technology to the next. Basically you have to schedule the downtime of that application. And you hope and pray that that weekend is a long enough outage for you to move that data from that tier up through the application and back down to the next tier. Today, those weekends are gained back. There is no downtime for any application. All of that is scheduled just to move across as the application hmm. is running. I think the quality of life for people in the data center with virtualization, they can't sing enough praises about that. We studied that at Wikibon, one of your customers, in fact, uh -huh. was, the, was the case study, and they quantified the cost of migrating an array, and it, was, uh, it cost them $50,000 every time they migrated an array. Right. And then the other thing we looked at was the, the percent increase in utilization when they brought in Hitachi, and it actually saved them uh, like a 40 terabyte array or something like it, that. Now, you must see that a lot in your business. We do. Where, well, yeah. and, and a lot of people use that, um, you know, the efficiency of pooling um, storage together, but it's also this zero page reclaim. We had several customers tell us this is the silver bullet of the industry. If people only knew. We've had people say that they have gone from 20% utilization to 60, 80% just with that technology alone. Where we actually go in there, pull all the storage together, and then take all the unallocated or the allocated, um, not used storage, and reclaim it back. This is why I think that you guys are so innovative, because we were talking off camera, sometimes that'll hurt your business in the short term. It, but it definitely uh, did. Generally speaking, Hitachi's not a short term company. Well, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you the history of how that all came about. We had our executive advisory board. It came up, and we, we really asked for direct feedback, and I think our teams are proud of that, you know, with customers. They're not afraid to tell us what they think. They said, guess what, this is all really cool and everything else about evergreen, um, you know, data centers and so forth. But I'll tell you, we've already allocated all this storage out there. And this was when times were tough. Remember, the financial yeah, industry is yeah. heading down. They're under tremendous pressure. 70% budget cuts, absolutely, literally 70% budget cuts. They're the ones who say, well, how are you going to help us reclaim back all the assets? So we made a business decision, cultural decision, saying, you know what? We've deferred some customers acquisition of new storage by up to two years through this zero page reclaim. That meant that I hopefully have earned the partnership of that customer in the long time because I know, they hopefully know that we had their best interest in mind. Mm. Well, let's talk about the marketplace growth and then the end user or the benefits to society with the storage, because storage is the linchpin for cloud. The growth strategies that you guys have is open. Talk about the openness specifically and then how you guys are going to grow in the marketplace, obviously through the partnerships. Any changes there? Any things in the future around these new demands? You know, it's, uh, if I can just answer the question in the general terms, how do people, or how do we think we can grow this business? A lot of it's market share. We believe that we're gaining, on average, 250 new accounts per quarter. 
that's an astonishing number when you think about it. people are adopting the virtualization message. I think we're just in that steepness of you know, virtualization and the storage. The other one is when you think about me as a CEO for this company, we plan to move into new markets. Think of what's being offloaded from the application market, search. That's a huge market, right? Yeah. Discovery, repurposing all those personalization. content surfaces. Personalization, uh, governance. Media. All this yeah. is going to move into this. Yeah. And if we start attaching what we're doing in Hitachi Data Systems with our vertical businesses in Hitachi, we do the video surveillance for the city of New York. We have to do facial recognition. The data, the discovery, the searching, all that has to come together. Same with our medical business. It's a $10 billion mm -hmm. medical business. The ability to compare MRIs, to effectively search and discover that data and make it resonant for you know, the analytics side. We have a lot of uh, viewers out there that are, that are new to Hitachi and they, they're watching the general tech trends. Share with us three anecdotal things that customers say about Hitachi. In terms of you know when when you guys do business, if you want someone to know about Hitachi, what would be three different things that you hear most from yeah. customers? You know, or I'll, I'll say what customers are surprised about. You know, we have about a thirty billion dollar energy business, so a lot of those windmills that you see, you know, driving down the highway, a lot of those are built from Hitachi. Mm. The ability for us to cool nuclear generators. We've taken that same technology and applied it to direct cooling of the actual data centers themselves. You know we have the most efficient data center in the world, it's in Yokohama. We've taken the technologies from the, um, our energy groups and we said, well we know how to cool nuclear power plants, we might know how to cool you know, data centers. IBM and EMC and HP don't have any idea about that. The idea that we provide all the electric motors for most car manufacturers of hybrid motors is unknown to a lot of people. Mm. That is a hybrid, that's a Hitachi specialty. You know, being able to provide that for a sustainable environment going forward. We use a lot of that technology in the motors that we've used to create the uh, no-spin, slow-spin disk. So you combine that technology, that architecture, with the ability to do lifecycle management of data, I now have a good synergy of placing data on a sustainable platform that can be repurposed at any time and discovered and searched at any time and yet good for the infrastructure. The synergy is the operative word there, right? Your, your semiconductor group, your networking group with your crossbar uh, switch, Yep. Right. your disk drives. You you, know. I'm just giving you examples yeah. of how we're really becoming to know. A lot of cross-fertilization going yeah. on within yeah. the company. And we've got a long ways to go, too. Great, that's awesome. We're here at SiliconAngle.com with the CEO of Hitachi Data Systems. Great keynote, great vision. Um, any parting advice for folks out there who, who are Embarking on the future, the you know the consumerization of IT, which thank God you didn't say because it's been kind of a punchline, but you really were talking about it. Uh, this consumerization. Any advice for the folks out there who are planning it, who have mission critical uh, backend storage virtualization platforms, what they should be doing going forward and in, in looking at their platforms? Well, I think over the last several years, you know, it's kind of the crossing the chasm kind of um, you know markets. I think we've been virtualizing data for a long time. I think it's now very, very credible technology. And I think, you know, trust the references that we have that you're going to save a lot of money for your company. I think you owe it to your company at least to give it a shot. Really do the kick the tires, as Colin said, you know, in his um, uh, speech. But, you know, one, one of the things is that this virtualization, a lot, of, a lot of our competitors are still saying that virtualization is not ready. Well, of course theirs is not ready, ours is. And it really does do um, some justice for the uh, infrastructure environments. It really makes them efficient, and it also propels you on the path of, virtual, of uh, a vision toward information and content integration. Great stuff, Jack Domey, live at theCUBE. Jack, thanks so much for thanks, coming guys. in. It was great appreciate to have you. It. Really well, great wonderful. Yeah, great thanks I for having it. us here. Thanks I really appreciate much. the support. Okay, take care, guys. Content Cloud. We love that because we are in the content business. Our goal at SiliconAngle.com is to pump out as much content as possible. And not run out of storage. And not run out of storage. <laughs> you know, by the way, we should ask if we can get some storage from him. Yeah. We need some of that. We tearing. always need more storage. Oh, damn, we got Mark over there freaking out. <laughs> terabytes and terabytes coming off the on the disk. We're throwing. We're doing our share of pumping out some big data. Big, the server's smoking over there. Um, very impressive individual. He's a lot, a lot of energy. Jack's great. And I got to say, I'm I'm really psyched that they're they're really addressing the future. Hitachi talking about the future, Dave. Yeah, well, uh, like I said, Hitachi's always been known for great products, right? And, and usually here, big product, message, product, product, product. We're seeing a new, bold vision. This, this notion of the content cloud is new. And we saw some nice slams on EMC um, and the competitors. They talk, we walk. Well, they, they yeah. say we do. 
Yeah, Jack was was forthcoming about that, and you uh, think storage is sexy. You know, you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> he said, Dave Scott thinks so. Um, yeah, so excellent uh, session from Jack. We got more more coming up. We got some customers coming up. We've got Intel um, trying to get Lloyd's Bank. We had a little conflict, but we'll get them back on. Um, more bloggers, ESGs coming up, you know, some analysts. Yeah, I'm really and impressed Brian to get the third party validation and seeing the analysts you mentioned earlier. They're surprised, I think, that, and, and not terribly surprised, but Hitachi's putting a good foot forward. Um, they're delivering availability at announcement, so not a lot of hype, and they're very forthright about what's coming in about six months is their timetable. And they've always done that. You know, they've, they've always been really tight about what's, what's announced and, and what's coming in the near term. But I mean, I get the sense from, from here and from Jack in, in, in the live stream and the keynote is that he gets the future. I mean, he's you know, got that very storage-centric kind of you know, nomenclature in the way he talks, but he really is talking about the future and, and, and the personalization, the consumerization of IT. I mean, people want stuff faster. They want the mobile apps. Uh, I was just talking off camera with Verizon Wireless guy. They got a development lab for Android developers. I mean, the world is moving really fast, and you know, storage has got to be there. Well, and the, and the cultural aspects here, John, are, are you know, palatable, right? I mean, you can really palpable. You can really sense the the cultural impact. So, you know, Hitachi hundred year anniversary, um, but there's a cultural shift that we're seeing now. Um, it used to be Hitachi, very stodgy yeah. company. HDS was just a distribution arm, a sales arm. Um, and while that's still their primary role, sales and marketing, um, you're seeing a lot more input go back to Japan. So for example, uh, Jack and his team, I mentioned this, Jack Domey, Brian Householder, uh, John Mansfield, all three of those guys. Is this guys, a new team? Uh, uh, yeah, it's a relatively new team. They've now been here for, I don't know, five, five years, six years, but they came you know, from different places, but they were all together at Storage Networks, Inc., that hot startup during the dot-com bubble. So, Peter they're, Bell's so they're a team. They're in the cycle together, so they're riding yes. the wave. Um, Brad O'Neill was at that company. Um, yeah. uh, Ed Paralisi was there, and he's here now. And So there's a real culture of moving fast, Ladies moving smart, doing startups, first mover advantage, so innovation, you know, that's seeping through, I think, to, to I was, Japan. I was impressed by, he did mention a nice tidbit we can explore on, is the cross-fertilization uh, uh, or inside the company. I asked him the question about what people say about Hitachi. He referenced something really interesting, that Hitachi's power uh, windmill operations, turbines, yeah. they're taking some of that technology for the power and cooling. As we know, it's very scarce in the data center. Let me tell you a little bit something about uh, Hitachi as well. I, I mentioned I've been to Odawara a number of times. Oh, we get some bloggers coming. Go ahead, finish okay. your thought. Okay. So, so I wanted to show you. Back in late 1980s, I remember sitting with Jan Naruse, who used to be the, the CEO of, uh, of Hitachi Data Systems and a you know, big wig at Hitachi. And he was asking, about the time, all they did is copy IBM with better product. At the time, he said, how do Americans innovate? You know, they, and they sought that out. And they've clearly now come around full circle and really are, are an innovative product company and uh, taking new, uh, new leaps.